Hebrew patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the forefathers, the ancestors of the Hebrew nations, of the Israelite tribes. Okay? They're in the book of Genesis, first book of the Bible. And uh, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were the first ancestors. Abraham gave, uh, begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, and Esau. Esau and Jacob were twins, but Esau technically was the first to come out, therefore he was considered the firstborn. But Jacob, when they grew up, he bought the right of the firstborn from Esau who despised it. We will read about this later. Then when Isaac, their father, wished to give a blessing to Esau, Jacob tricked him tricked their father, Jacob disguised himself as Esau, he presented himself before Isaac, Isaac was blind, he presented himself as Esau, Isaac was deceived and gave Jacob the blessing. Jacob took the blessing from himself by pretending to be someone else, by pretending to be Esau. So the question is asked, why was this necessary? This is a very important point. This is one something of the destiny of the whole of the world. It's involved with it, involves everything the God Almighty revealing himself to mankind through the Bible. Through the Israelite nation. So why did you need this this these uh this roundabout cheating, a subterfuge type of a behavior? to get what should have been yours or what should have been given in the first place. So we'll come to that. And uh, the answer lies partly in what transpired later, what came later. So Jacob, Jacob was renamed Israel. He, was, he became Israel. Jacob begat 12 sons and these 12 sons became the ancestors of the 12 tribes of Israel. One of his sons, one of the sons of Jacob was Joseph. Joseph received the right of the firstborn. See 1 Chronicles 5 to 2. It says expressly that Jacob, that Joseph received the right of the firstborn. 1 Chronicles 5 2. Some people seem to be doubtful about this, uncertain about it. Look it up. Joseph received the right of the firstborn. He was considered the firstborn son of Jacob. And these 12 tribes of Jacob of Israel were destined to divide into two. One section became Judah, that is the Jewish people who consist of the tribes, mainly of the tribes of uh, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and uh, minority representatives of the other tribes. And the, uh, the task of the Jews, together the, they were in the kingdom of Judah. They are known as the Jews collectively. The task of the Jews was to develop the Torah. Judah is my lawgiver, the maker of my laws, it says in the Bible, it says in Psalms and elsewhere. The task of the Jews was to develop the Torah and related matters. The other section of the Israelite nation became the Lost Ten Tribes, so headed by the tribe of Joseph. And the Lost Ten Tribes were destined to lose consciousness of their ancestry, to become like the Gentiles, and then evolve upwards, elevating the rest of humanity along with them. And a comparison of the different blessings given to the forefathers, it shows that the blessing that Joseph received was encompassed in that which Jacob, pretending to be Esau, had taken from Isaac. In other words, Jacob took a blessing from Isaac when Isaac thought, misunderstood, thought Jacob to be Esau and he blessed Jacob, and this blessing was passed on to Joseph. And we see this from by comparison by comparing the blessings. Esau, Esau is also known as Edom in the Bible. Esau was destined to assist the Assyrians in exiling the ten tribes. That is, the ten tribes of Israel headed by Joseph. And for a while, Edomites also ruled over them when they moved to the west, moved to the British Isles and elsewhere. 
And the beginning Edomites ruled over them in their places of exile. And Joseph, that is all of the ten tribes, but especially Joseph, lost awareness of his ancestry. He became like Esau. He had disguised himself as his forefather Jacob had done. Now, the, the Bible, the story of the Bible, is telling us history of things that really happened, actual events that really happened, a narrative, a chronology, historical recording. But in addition to that, it also, in addition to being uh, actual chronology, recording of events, it is also symbolic. It also represents things that will happen in the future. It represents things that will happen in the future, things that will come to pass with their end and descendants. So, the descendants of Joseph were to become like the children of Esau, to be disguised as them, to forget who they were, and to fulfill their task as, as children of Esau. As we said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were forefathers of Israel, our nation. The Almighty blessed Abraham. Abraham was the first Hebrew. The Almighty blessed Ab Abraham, and Abraham passed the blessing on to Isaac. And Abraham had been promised a great nation and he, that he would become. Abraham, the first patriarch, had been promised that he would become a great nation. And in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. All the peoples of the earth will be blessed through him. See Genesis 12, 2 to 3. And I'll make my covenant between me and you, and I'll multiply you exceedingly. I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you in their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be a good unto you and to my seed after you. Genesis 17, 6 to 7. Isaac, Abraham begat Isaac. He also begat Ishmael. Ishmael, he begat Ishmael from Hagar, the servant, the maidservant of his wife Sarah. And from Ishmael traditionally come the forefathers, the forefather of many of the Arab nations, of the forces of Islam, descended from Ishmael. But nevertheless, the blessing was promised to Abraham as he would pass it on to Isaac and the sins of Isaac. It says, My covenant I will establish with Isaac, Genesis seventeen twenty one. I will establish my covenant with him that is within Isaac for an everlasting covenant and seat after him, Genesis seventeen nineteen. And the Almighty informed Abraham, and Isaac shall your seed be called, Genesis twenty one twenty one. And the Bible tells us how Isaac was about to bless his son Esau. But Jacob, that is a twin brother of Esau, took the blessing instead by subterfuge, by trickery, by posing as someone else, by acting as an imposter. That's what the Bible tells us. It's not something, I'm not making things up here. It's what the Bible tells us, black and white, it's there. And even though Esau and Jacob, the sons of Isaac, both were the sons of Isaac, both Esau and Jacob. They were twins. Only Jacob received the blessing, whereas Esau did not. And Jacob was renamed Israel. See Genesis 32, 28, and also Genesis 34, 10. Jacob was renamed Israel, and from Israel came the twelve tribes of Israel. And what can we learn about this? We told in the Bible how Isaac became old and wished to bless Esau. And the Bible tells us. And you, you already know it, heard it, you read it a lot of times, probably, possibly, you heard it many times, it doesn't matter, it's always worth hearing, it's always new. It's always something new. Genesis 27, 1 says, There came a when Isaac was old and his eyes were too dim to see that he called his oldest son. Esau said to my son, and he said to him, Here I am. 
Isaac said, Behold, now I am old, and I do not know the day of my death. Now then, please take your gear, your equipment, your hunting equipment, your quiver, and your bow, your arrows, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. Then it was early. That was in the early days of mankind. Things were different now than they are now. Even not long ago, in the land of Israel, before the Jews started coming, before the establishment of the state of Israel, and things were quite wild. There's a lot of very barren, the land was quite empty. And you had deer running around. And even now in certain places you still find deer running around in the fields. And in those times, according to the Bible, the climate was a little bit different than it is now. It was wetter, damper, there were more trees, there were forests. And there were wildlife all over. And you could go out and just shoot an arrow and, and catch yourself a uh, venison. The same as in Norway. Even in Norway until very recently, like a hundred years ago, you could go out in certain seasons of the year with a net and just put it in the, in the, in the water and come up with a whole load of herring. Uh, this is... Uh, we, we, this is... We have uh, witnesses about this. So too, in the same way as the Norwegians could come up with a whole lot of load of herring by just dipping a net in the water. And not only in Norway, also where I lived in Australia at one time it was like that in certain areas. So too in those days, there were a lot of deer running around the fields out in the wilderness outside and then you just step outside with your bow and arrow and hunt yourself an afternoon meal. And so he asked, Isaac asked, he sought to prepare that for him. And go and hunt him for him, hunt him a, a good meal and prepare it as he knows how to do and bring it to him that he may eat so that he may bless him before he dies. So this is also a psychological truth, a psychological truth that we have. Reality, a person is a human being, we are a human being, we are a human being, we are, we are spiritual, we, have, uh, we wish to cleave to the Almighty, to pray to God, to be spiritual, but we also have a physical side to our existence. And you know, if you're a little bit sick, or don't feel well, you can't concentrate, it's difficult to pray. It's difficult to be optimistic. It's difficult to have a, a good feeling, as you should have. So therefore you should take care of your body, take care of your health. That's what the Almighty wants of you. So too, Isaac, the Asians knew this, and so Isaac said he wants to feel good, he wants to eat and be satisfied and have a good feeling in him, so that with a full spirit he may be able to bless him. And uh, meanwhile, Rebecca, Rebecca was the mother of Esau and Jacob. She was the wife of Isaac, and she overheard what Isaac told, said to Esau. So she told Jacob, the other son, to dress himself up as Esau. She would help him, give him skins and so on to disguise himself as Esau, and present himself to Isaac, who was blind, and therefore Isaac would feel his arms and so on. And uh, and there would be lamb skin, there would be uh, skins of animals on them. And uh, so the blessing, and then, then uh, apparently apart from that that was similar, the blessing was therefore given to Jacob. I, I know I have, uh, thank God, I have uh, a few sons. And now I recognize them all, but when they were a little younger, they would ring me up and I know it was one of them wouldn't always be certain which one was speaking to me till they identify themselves. So that happens. And I was their father. And so Isaac too was their father. And then he later said the voice is the voice of Esau, but the, the hands are the hands of Esau, but the, the voice is the voice of, of Jacob. But he wasn't certain. And when Jacob identified as Esau, he took it as, uh, as natural. And uh, 
Jacob, when Re Rebecca proposed his plot to him, he was afraid of incurring the wrath of his father and bringing a blessing on himself, uh, bringing a curse upon himself. But Rebecca told him not to worry. Rebecca would, said she would take upon herself any calumny, any bad effects that might result. And in Genesis 27, towards the 6, Rebecca said to her son Jacob, Behold, I heard your father speaking to your brother Esau, saying, Bring me some game and prepare a savory dish for me that I may eat and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, listen to me as I command you. So Jacob answered his mother, Rebekah, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I will, then I will be as a deceiver, as a trickery, a confidence, confidence man in his sight. And I will bring upon myself a curse and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, You'll curse me on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. And Rebecca, Rebecca incidentally had received a prophecy when the boys had been born, and when they were born, and she had received a prophecy that the younger, that is Jacob, would need to be preeminent, that he would have to receive the, ble the blessing. See Genesis 25, verses 21 to 23. So what Rebecca was doing was fulfilling the, the, the commandment of God Almighty, or what she had been told. And so Isaac ended up blessing Jacob, and then when he blessed Jacob, he felt that God was speaking through him. Like he knew that this was a real blessing. The blessing was coming from God, but he was the conduit. And therefore the blessing was valid and irrevocable, regardless as to whether it was Jacob or Esau. And when he realized that it wasn't Esau, it says Genesis 27, 33, then Isaac trembled violently and said, who that was then? He then that hunted game, and I brought, I brought it to me. So that I ate of all of it before you came and blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. For saying the blessing was effective no matter how it came, who, who it was. He knew the time he was given the blessing was effective. And then uh, he saw, asked that he too should receive a blessing. See Genesis 27, 34. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and he said to his father, Bless me also, my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. Then Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master, and all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, I have the only one blessing my father. Bless me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, Isaac, then Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth, that is, of fertile areas. And the dew of heaven from above, beneficial, salubrious climates. By your sword you shall live, a warrior nation. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. The word translated as restless in Hebrew is tarid, from the root red, a ride. And he cannot a rulership. And this perhaps is where the word ride, ride a horse, in English is derived from, to rule over the horse, to rule over it. This is what, so in the end times there will be a struggle between the rulership between Esau and Jacob. And Esau, Isaac here did not want to give the blessing to Esau, but in the end he did, after Esau importuned him. And why did he refuse the first and then relent and give a blessing? It may be that since he had made Jacob the master of Esau and all his kin, as see in Genesis 27, 37, that anything that accrued to Esau ultimately would belong to Jacob. In Hebrew law, a slave has no property of his own, but what he, ever he has really belongs to his master. The blessing to Esau was in effect ultimately only in addition to that given to Jacob, and in the end it was to go to Jacob. So we'll recap the on this and add a few points. 
I had a few points. Now, Jacob and Esau were twin brothers. Esau was the older. I think their father wished to bless Esau. Genesis 27, 1 to 3. The mother of the boys, Rebekah, prevailed upon Jacob to disguise himself as Esau. Genesis 27, 6, 13. Consequently, Isaac, who was born, blessed Jacob, thinking him to be Esau. Almost immediately afterwards, Esau came in expecting to receive the blessing. Isaac revealed to us. To Jacob, Isaac revealed to Esau what had happened, and the blessing to Jacob was valid. Yes, and he shall be blessed. To Genesis twenty-seven thirty-three. Yes, and he shall be blessed. Isaac then told Isaac that he had previously sold the birthright to Jacob. Isaac then told Isaac that he had previously sold the birthright to Jacob. Isaac again confirmed the blessing to Jacob. To Eden, Genesis twenty-seven thirty-six thirty-seven. Apparently whoever had the birthright was to receive the blessing. Before then Isaac had evidently, evidently not known that Jacob had already taken the birthright. By Esau now informing Isaac of this, he was unwittingly confirming the eyes of Isaac the right of Jacob to have also taken the blessing. Just uh, have a look at something of interest in Genesis 27 concerning the selling of the blessing. Genesis 25, Hebrew book, Hebrew Bible. We have a point of interest here concerning the selling of the birthright. Seeing that the birthright was connected to the blessing. Whoever had the birthright also had the blessing. Jacob took the blessing, took the birthright from Esau, and then he took the birthright for subterfuge. But we see it is implied that whoever had the birthright had to have the blessing anyway. So we see what, what this blessing is, what it, what it concerns, what is, uh, it involves. It says, 25, Genesis 25, we have it here. Birth of the sons of Isaac, Esau and Jacob. And how? Esau is technically the firstborn, but Jacob came out after him, holding on the heel of Esau. And that Rebekah was told that two nations would come out of her, that these would be these two sons would be two peoples, and they would struggle between each other, as they had been struggling with each other while they were still in their womb, and the younger would eventually have the prevalence. That would be Jacob. And then it goes on, and it tells us. that Esau was a hunting man, a macho type of person, used to go out and hunt and bring venison to his father. He was a man's man, he was destined to become a mil the, the ancestor of a military race, a domineering race that would be important in world history, a race of soldiers and the like. Whereas Jacob was more genteel, soft, one could say. He had his own, his own world. And uh, it happened that, happened that he had prepared a kind of porridge, a kind of a bowl of lentils, of, of red beans. And Jacob, Esau came in from the hunting. He saw come in from the hunting, and he says to Yaakov, pour these beans, pour this porridge down my throat. He was so exhausted he couldn't even lift them up to his mouth. That happens. He was so physically exhausted he had to have, had to ask Yaakov to pour it down his throat to revive his spirit, to revive himself. And Jacob did this. And then it says, Yaakov says, Send me, sell me today your birthright. And Esau says, I'm going to die. What good is the, the birthright for me? And uh, Yaakov said, Swear unto me today. And he swore unto him. And he's 
sold the firstborn birthright to Jacob, and Jacob gave to Esau bread and the porridge of lentils, and he ate, Esau ate, and he drank, and he got up, and he went out, and he despised, and Esau despised the Bukhura. That's what it says according to the simple meaning of the text. This is how it's always been understood. And it could be that way. He said, Esau came in from hunting, he was dying, he was dying, he was famished, very extremely tired. And you get that way, people who, who act, uh, athletes and so on, who, who, who make a great efforts, sometimes get in a desperate situation, they need something to revive themselves. So Esau wanted the field that was almost a life-saving need for him to eat from this pottage. And so, Jacob said unto him, Sell the birthright unto me, and I'll give it to you. That's how it sounds like, yeah. So he sold it to him, and he swore unto him, and he gave it unto him, and he despised it. So you could say this might be there's something wrong here. Could be. There's some type of moral problem here. There's something ethically that doesn't come together. Could be. Could claim that. Okay. So, Rabbi Mecklenburg, about in the 1800s, he died in 1860, Rabbi Mecklenburg, he lived in Germany. He was a commentator on the Bible, and he specialized in grammar and uh, the Hebrew language. And here he says something of interest. Now, this is what he says. It's not, universal, no, it's not universally accepted. People don't necessarily know about it. But it's a point worth noting. He says, the Hebrew says that Jacob gave to Esau the bread and the pottage, and he ate, that is, Esau ate, and Esau drank, and Esau got up, and Esau went out, and Esau despised the birthright. So, where it says that Yaakov gave to Esau the pottage, it says, Be Yaakov Natan. This is probably the only place in the whole Bible with this construct, construct exists, this grammatical construct in effect, says that Jacob had already given it to him. The Hebrew text is unique. The construct, as it is read, literally is saying, that Esau came in, Jacob gave him to eat, poured it down his throat, revived him, and then he requested the birthright and Esau gave it to him. He didn't make him promise it to him on condition that he gave him his birthright. First he gave him the food, then he asked for the birthright. According to the Bible, according to the Hebrew text, according to the grammatical structure, construct, of this sentence in Hebrew. You can take it or leave it, but it's interesting. It exists, it's there. It's a possibility. And it's perhaps worth keeping in mind. You should also note that there's such a thing as a blessing that after Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob, he confirmed the blessing. Even then he said that they Immediately afterwards, he confirmed the blessing, but also afterwards, several days afterwards, he confirmed the blessing again to Jacob. See Genesis 28, 3 to 4. And we know about the blessing. We have such a how blessings work, or how we can understand. And the blessing is, in effect, given by God. God gives a blessing. God gives a blessing, but for his own reasons, he sometimes wants the Almighty to deliver, wants the blessing to be delivered by human beings. In number six, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, 
This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace so that you put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. So the priests were, blessed, were commanded to bless the children of Israel. And, uh, and it was said that if the priest give, do give this blessing, then the blessing will come into effect. We saw that Isaac in giving the blessing, he realized that the blessing that they had given was valid. And it was legal, being connected with whoever held the birthright. And when uh, Isaac gave the blessing to, to Jacob, thinking it was Esau, he did not know that Esau had sold the birthright to, to Jacob. It was a surprise to him. The blessing that Isaac said to Jacob, Genesis 27, The smell, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you, this is Genesis 27. Uh, may therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. So this blessing it, it, it entailed material blessings and ruling over other peoples. And uh, Esau had to receive a blessing of his own. In Genesis 27, 28, 40, as we saw. As we saw before. And he, when he said, Your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth in Genesis in, Ge in Genesis 27. The dwelling, dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven above. By your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother. And then you shall struggle against your brother over the rulership. That was a blessing. And you see it in Genesis, see it in Genesis 27, the light of what we have told you concerning the Hebrew meaning of the word translated as reckless, actually meaning rulership, and that there will be a struggle over the rulership in the end times. And uh, Esau, was to receive a third foot of land and be materially prosperous. He was lived by a sword with a martial qualities and he would struggle with the sense of Jacob over the rulership. And Jacob was to be renamed Israel, Genesis 32, 28, 35, 10. And Jacob had 12 sons and become the ancestors of 12 tribes. And all the sons of Israel were to be blessed, see Genesis 49, 28. But a special blessing was placed on Joseph, who was considered the first one. See 1 Chronicles 5 to 2. And the blessing was given to Jacob as he was disguised as Esau. And they are similar to those given to Joseph and his sons. And this is a blessing given to Joseph. See Genesis 49 25 onwards. For the God of your father who will help you, and by the Almighty will bless you. The blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors up to the outmost bond, bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, and the crown of the head of him will separate from his brethren. And before then, he also blessed Joseph and his two sons, see Genesis 48, 15 onwards. He blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked. The God who fed me all my life long till to this day. The angel has redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads, bless the children. Let my name be named upon them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. Let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now that when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of their prime, he displeased him. So he took hold of his master's father's hand to remove it. From Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head, and Jez Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father. For this one is the first one, put your right hand on his head. But his father refused, saying, I know, my son, I know he also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. His descendants shall become a multitude of nations. In Hebrew, Malay, Agoyim, Genesis 48, 19, literally translated as the fullness of nations. 
but many uh, rule over peoples or rule over the peoples or give existence to the peoples, enable other peoples to exist through him. And uh, this is what happened to the descendants of Joseph. They did, they ruled over other peoples and they enabled other peoples to come into existence and they still do. And the light of the sages and rabbinical commentators and other of our teachings, the goal of the Israelite tribes was to learn and keep the Torah and also to elevate mankind by ruling over the nations. They should have done this after coming out of Egypt and conquering the land of Canaan. The world, however, was not ready for them. They're not ready for the world. In other words, in the beginning they were supposed to do the two things, keep the Torah and also elevate mankind. But they were not ready for it. So therefore they had to be divided. The blessing had to be split. Joseph received the blessing initially intended for Esau in order to bring the blessing into fruition he had to become like Esau. This was foreshadowed by Jacob having disguised himself as Esau. And Joseph was to come not only leading tribe among the ten tribes but also to represent them, to be symbolic of them. And the ten tribes would be exiled by the Assyrians into this consciousness of their ancestry. The Syrians, when they exiled the ten tribes, they used other peoples as agents, as proxies to carry out their policies. Amos tells us that the Assyrians used Phoenicians from Tyre, and also Philistines. The Philistines are people of Minoa and my Mekinian culture, Greek type culture. And they, these proxies, these agents, were used to transfer oh, the exiled Israelites, see Amos 1 to 6, over the sea. See the Brigham commentaries and explanations. And the Edomites, Amos 1 to 9, were used as overseers, that is, Seneschals, overseers, rulers, not uh, foremen and so on, in resettling Israelite exiles. And at first the ten tribes would be subject to Edom, say Amos chapter 1, and they would adopt the cultural guise the disguise of Esau, as Jacob had done to receive the blessings. Edomites, the sons of Esau, are be given not only the, in the land of Edom, but all over the Middle East, including the area of Tyre, which was a Phoenician city on the coast of what's now Lebanon. I like Sammy's, an early historian, 1636 to 1679. He recorded that early Britain before the Anglo-Saxon invasions had been heavily influenced by Phoenician culture. And he identifies the Phoenicians as Edomites, with a, with a Canaanite admixture. The Phoenician dwell, dwelt on coasts in cities on the coast of Syria and Lebanon, two main cities were Sidon and Tyre. They were also known as the Idumean Tyre Tyrians, that is the people of Tyre, the city of Tyre, belonged to Idumea. And uh, they were also known as Idumeans, uh, Idumeans from Tyre. Idumean is another form of the word Edomite, that is from Esau. And the word Phoenician is also in Greek means red. In Hebrew the name Edom means red, so it's the same thing. The people of Tyre had a tradition recorded by Eusebius, uh, 300 CE, in the Common Era, but quoting from St. Cuniathon, an early writer about 300 BCE or earlier. And St. Cuniathon was a pagan from Tyre, and he recorded that Esau, that is Edom, and Samaria, that is the Israelites from the Ten Tribes, were brothers. And they had both participated in the foundation and building of Tyre, of the city of